this, this, this. Now last year the department didn't want to encumber that much more because the year before we had such a short season they said, well we're not going to uh, tie that money up. And when I say tied up, that when you write a contract, whether you spend it or not, that money is encumbered and tied up. You cannot touch it until the end of that contract. So if there was pre any maintenance to be done, bridge repairs or anything like that, it ties up all the money. So what they did is they said, well, we're just going to do what we did last year. We'll give them a contract. Well, obviously we had a great winner. Everybody ran out of money, so they had to go back and get amendments made to their contracts, which is a time process, you know, a paperwork process. So what we're trying to talk about to now is that, look, let's take the last five years average of what the amount of miles they grew, and let's give them that much money in their contract. So we're not going back and so, beating a horse. So if we write a, a contract with Southern Michigan for $50,000 and they only grew $30,000 worth, the money hasn't spent. When the contract is ended, that $20,000 that was extra was locked up, stays in our program, and it's, it is re-evaluated toward maintenance or grooming or whatever it may be. So, so we don't lose it then? We don't lose it. We don't no, we don't. Lose it. It's not, Don doesn't get to keep it. He'd like to. He doesn't get to keep it. And We're back there. Are you uh, ever denied when you call your contact for like a double groom since you've seen oh, yeah. groom seven days a week? Um, we, a couple, year, couple years ago, we had some issues with that. I got a letter from the state stating that I would only double groom Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I came back with a letter telling me, listen, six years ago that would been great. But right now we got traffic that's just, we had a great year, a lot of snow. There's not traffic here. So we're only group. It's not a fun thing to groom. If you haven't been in a groomer, the first three days are great. After that, it sucks. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, you have to want, you have to want to have a trail system because you groom at seven miles an hour. If you Matt, <laughs> Matt Boom spent uh, one winter with us. He, was, he, was, he went up to Northern. And Matt says, you know, Don, he says, I'm pretty good with maintenance. And he said, uh, I've got some time that I can spend in and, and help you guys groom. I went, oh, great. Because we were hurting for groomer up here. And so Matt has a cabin in our area. And Matt says, I'll help you. It was a great thing because Matt... Besides being a groomer, we got Matt, he, he's pretty good with welders, so we got some stuff, other stuff taken care of. But tell him, Matt, it's great the first three or four days, right? <laughs> you really bust your bubble on that out, that trail usually takes you 10 hours, and you come struggling in after 16 hours, and you're on E, personally and the machine. <laughs> but as a snowmobiler, you're out there, you're hammering out the, the corners, you're going slow, you're, you're, you're making that trail what it needs to be. And that is what we're afraid of losing if we go back, go to a contracted system. Exactly. I, my, the only thing I'm going to say on that is, is that going to a contract type thing, um, snowmobilers, a snowmobiler should be grooming. The, the, the guy grooming the trail should be a snowmobiler because he's the only one that knows it's how good. a corner should be and how what, what he wants other people to be, what he wants to ride on. You exactly. Know, There's times that I've got off the groomer going, I want to get back up the ride that because I know mm. that I, I spent 16 hours going to the bear trap and back and there was three foot moguls and I didn't see you and that only happens if, not too often but you made the trip and come back I didn't see a snowmobile and I come back and that and I, I get out and I take I walk back to fully to that drag and all I can see is just a little bit of scuff mark from I'm walking and I'm really walking hard so I make the big loop check everything out make sure it's okay because that's the last thing I want to do is go around the, go around corner and see a track off, right guys? <laughs> and I'll tell you, this is another circle tap. But anyways, <laughs> where you walk through and see a bogey bad, and you go, oh shit, I only got another, probably an hour and a half, and I could be back at the barn. Now it's going to be another two and a half hours, because i got to get the jack out. i got to get some two-by-fours out. i got to lay there, i got to get this thing jacked up, because I can't pull this bogey off this machine. And it's about 18 below. It normally happens by then. So you jack it all up, you get it all on, you put it, and you take off again. And, and you're, as you're walking around, walking around the drag back to the other side going, well, when I get home, I'm going to ride. I know I am. So you get home, you fuel the machine, do the check on it, fuel it all up, do the, do the post, put it in the barn, shut the garage door, the sun's coming up, you're going, maybe I'll wait till tomorrow to go ride. I'll go take a nap. But you know, so, <coughs> but I've done that. I've gone home, got on my sled, and made a run going, awesome. You know, and then 
now there's snowmobilers out there seven days a week, 24 hours a day. We got guys that work midnights that are riding midnights. And, and I've talked to them and they said, hey, I said, oh, you guys are out here pretty early. Now we got in, we got in about four o'clock this morning because we worked last night and we, we come up and we're gonna ride. We're gonna ride at night because that's a work schedule. I'm going, hey, I've been there, I work midnights. I understand what you're talking about. So there's guys now that are riding that used to never ride. Or very seldom you see that. So the guys working midnights in the afternoons are riding their normal shift. Yes, sir. Out of that, the, would you say 68 or 69 grant, 68, 68 68 grant sponsors, <laughs> the total services that they provide for the snowmobilers, the grooming service, is there a, a number that you can put? What are the sales? What are the combined money that are paid to these 68 groups? that you know of that you can tell us? I mean, oh, like, yeah, is it up? Yeah. 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 And then, yeah. number two, yeah. when you say groomer barns or this or that, do you pay rent to put these to groomer. places? Do you pay rent to a private citizen? Uh, rent, you know? rent, I'll use Grammar A. Grammar A just... Grammar A's been around as long as seeing groomer. Mm -hmm. Grammar A just yeah. got a groomer barn. Right. A guy built the barn for them, and they're leasing it for for Grand Lake, okay? So they're paying the leasing that that groomer barn. Does that come out of the four dollars and sixty one cents? No, that's on your own. The Senior Stoneville Association got with the Senior Township. We had an old sawmill that the township got back from a lease that was in pretty much shambles. We sold four snowmobiles one year on a raffle, made about $17,216. I think that's pretty close to what we made. We took that money, put it towards the Goober Barn, and if you guys have been on the, and seen the website, there's Goober operators that dress up as females. And we, have, and we have a big bash that we made $5,300 last year. You know, so that money's was put into the groomer bar. Mm -hmm. on, on, that's on our own. We can't use that money. The 462 women can't use that money for bars. It stays right in the right in our regs that we can't do it. So how do you do it? I spent many years in the parking lot of my motel changing oil at 25 below zero. It's cold now. So we got the other say we gotta do something different. That's how we get the bar. Yes, go ahead. I think it was seven point one million dollars total last year. Two point nine was for grooming. Well, yeah, seven point well, yeah, seven point three was the total. That's two thousand. Uh, uh, trail maintenance grants. In other words, in the state budget, yeah. there was seven point three set aside for the grant sponsors to brush, side groom, maintenance on the trails. Everything. What was actually what was actually locked up for for grooming was two point nine million dollars with just grooming. Just about six hundred thousand for brushing and siding. Now this is what was set aside. I won't have the figures on what was actually spent last year for about another two weeks yet. But so that's a pretty good size number. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, yeah definitely. A big number to watch. We, yeah. we spent yeah, we sp totally spent three seven point three million dollars a year in siding, brushing, trail maintenance, uh, uh, leases, uh, porta johns. Uh, uh, utility payments for electricity to plug the groomers in, and so on and so forth. Yes. <laughs> Quick question on as it relates to the equipment side of the year. Is it probably the same story where the, year, the clubs or whoever the grant sponsors are responsible for all the budgetary yeah, no, money for the equipment that they're using? Or is that also part of the registration trail permit fund that you're given a separate set of monies for your own equipment? Okay. Now, each year, they're in the DNR comes up with a list of. Let me, let me go back and start some history here. Okay. 19. Prior to 1990, every grooming entity had to go out and buy, buy scrape, borrow, sign, buy their own equipment. Who were you told what equipment to buy? Or? No, 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 buy your own equipment. In in 1992, we came up with a, uh, a, a grants program to buy equipment. It was a 60-40 split. So 60% of the funds came from your registration and trip and, and funds. 40% was still had to be raised by the local grant sponsor. In 1998, we went to 75-25, and then in 2006, Six. we actually went to 100% because the grooming equipment, it got to the point where the clubs couldn't go to the bank to borrow money because obviously the banks all want somebody to sign guaranteeing it when you got uh, tuckers and uh, piston bullies cost 